Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bhaskar Sengupta. I run a charity for Queen's University, Belfast, in South Asia and Southeast Asia on arsenic remediation from groundwater. Um, some of you will know that uh, arsenic doesn't have any color, any taste, or any organoleptic properties by which you know that arsenic is present in water. It's extremely poisonous that all of us know this, and it's also known as king of poisons or poison of kings. And uh, arsenic in the Bengal Delta or in other places were not really uh, uh, reached an alarming level until 40 years ago when the change in agricultural practices uh, caused the release of arsenic from the, from the groundwater, uh, from the silt in the groundwater. And uh, the level was so high that uh, many people, thousands of people, were affected by this. The current estimate is nearly 170 million people are affected in uh, 70 different countries. And uh, the form of disease could vary from uh, skin cancer to other organ cancers and uh, even type 2 diabetes leading to, leading to other serious complications. So in our process, what we do is we uh, pump water out from the shallow aquifers and groundwater, generally very low in oxygen, is one of the release, uh, reasons why bacteria release arsenic because they need a kind of electron acceptor in the language of chemistry. So we aerate it by spraying in a tank using ordinary shower heads and release a part of it back to the aquifer under gravity. And uh, that stops uh, the further dissolution of arsenic. And uh, not only that, it also uh, causes it to precipitate along with iron and manganese, which are the common elements on which it binds, back to the, uh, to the aquifer sand uh, in a form and shape that sort of way it existed for millions of years. Uh, the technology is very simple, but, but it never existed in, in any form or shape anywhere, and we literally developed it from the drawing board and tried it out uh, in the Bengal Delta for the first time. This is the description of the grains on which the arsenic is bound. In fact, this is the way it existed for millions of years, and the dissolution of arsenic from the soil grains and appearing in the groundwater is a phenomenon that was observed only 40 years ago. And, uh, the process uh, was made very simple, and uh, we first established it in the Bengal Delta and uh, set up six treatment plants. They're all very simple, run by the local villagers. And all the uh, processes were simplified to a point that the maintenance is easy, and it doesn't need any chemicals. It does not produce any waste. But we also tried it out on a, for a large-scale system uh, in Malaysia and a few other places. And in both cases, the designs were a little more complex, but it worked very well. We needed sophisticated instruments for groundwater mapping. But going back to the simple process where we have set up the few plants in the Bengal Delta, as you can see, the rural communities come and collect water. And we have highlighted uh, the area where the water actually spills, that there's no mark of iron. In fact, in those areas, the iron concentration is very high. When you don't see iron, uh, it's actually as an indication that it traps the arsenic and it goes back to the soil in the native form. We call it arsenopyrite. Uh, but for a very large system, this kind of observations are not good enough. So we need sophisticated instruments to map the water flow in the aquifer. When it comes to cost, these plants are very cheap to set up. Uh, there's about 5,000 uh, 5, US dollar and it produces 20,000 liters. It's, it's a very conservative estimate, three or 4,000, but we can go up to 20,000 uh, with a very marginal cost increase. And they have a very long life. They last for 25 years without problems. They have very little maintenance cost. No chemicals are ever used. And also, they don't produce any waste. If we compare our technology, which is known as SAR technology, with the available technologies in the market, you will find that the available technologies usually use kind of adsorbent, which traps um, the arsenic, and then disposal cost is very high because it's a secure landfill. And uh, in our process, we don't see anything on the ground. It's all happened in the, in the aquifer region. It's very cheap, very little maintenance cost, no chemicals are ever used, no sludge is ever produced. And we believe this is a permanent solution. We've also tried it for irrigation purposes. And this is very close to Nompen in Cambodia, uh, close to the Mekong uh, 
a river is probably 50 years from the edge of the water. This is solar plant. It doesn't even use electricity, and it produces 15,000 to 20,000 liters of water. And this plant is being replicated throughout Southeast Asia at the moment. And again, this is very green. It doesn't use any, any electrical power. It does not use any chemicals or any produce any waste. So large-scale implementation we have tried in Malaysia first, and then we are doing in other places as well. But there, of course, the process is slightly more complex because we have to flow, measure the groundwater flow. We have to map it. We have to know where to recharge the water, where to draw it from. And um, probably the next slide will show you how difficult it was. We tried it in a 45-acre site, and it was very, very successful and all funded by the Malaysian government. At the moment, the technology is officially approved in four countries, but more and more, more countries are adopting this. This is the location of different ob observation wells and uh, you know, pumping wells. And uh, this is roughly 43.4 if you take the fence and all fence areas, and that's about 45 acres. And we are going to set up uh, 100 million uh, liters, mi MLD, this million liters um, uh, a day plant here. That'll be the biggest using our technology. But we need to use different instruments to make sure that we are doing it right because just hit and miss will not work because this is almost a semi-commercial project because with the profit of the revenue from this will be will feed into our, our uh, charity and uh, you know set up more plants elsewhere. And this is, of course, a line diagram for a little more complex process. So again, it could be very simple, operated by villagers and who have hardly any, any education. And uh, you know, it could be very complex, completely automatic, which is uh, quite common for water treatment plants these days. And thank you very much. I'd like to show our you know, uh, uh, you know, sincere thanks to the Conica Phillips and St. Andrews uh, University, also the uh, members of the Board of Trustees and everybody else for the support this, uh, this award has established the technolo technology uh, in, in a proper way, and we have really moved very far from 2010. Thank you very much.